So, I just wanted, sh wanted to share with you the current book that I'm reading. Absolutely love it. Only like 20 pages in. Yeah, literally only 20 pages in. But I'm reading this. If you follow me on Instagram, you will know. Uh, this is, it's Women in Translation Month um, over internationally. And so I love, love, absolutely love reading. Um translated works especially when it comes to Japanese or Korean authors and all of that and I've read quite a few this year alone uh, I've read Kim Jong I've read the lady in the purple skirt I've read oh my gosh I've read quite a few this year alone and this one is the next one that I'm reading it's so short I'm trying to keep up my uh, <laughs> total of 45 books to read this year and I think this one is the 27th or something I don't know 26 27 and uh, this is convenience store woman by Sayaka Murata and I've wanted this book for so long so long and I would never find it at bookstores and I would always find it on take a lot and it would say uh, 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 11 to 16 days wait you know um, and I would just be like, nah, bro, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I don't have time for that. So eventually one day I was at the uh, Hyde Park exclusive books, which is one of my favorite ones. It's actually my number one favorite exclusive books in Joburg. And because it's right inside the exclusive books, further in is an olives and plates. So I love to go to that one and check out books and then sit down and have lunch or brunch or whatever just by my lonesome self on solo dates and all of that and then I will step back into the bookstore and look some more so I found this there and I so far I'm really enjoying it it just we follow Keiko and Keiko is this 36 year old woman who works in a convenience store and she's quite content with her life. She just hasn't ever fit in um, her whole life. She just stands out like a sore thumb. 
she's not really great with you know like i read a portion of the book book in the beginning where um she would do really strange things as a child growing up I, she can't quite decipher emotions and how people react to certain things like there's a scene in the book there's um a moment in the book where she's a child and she sees a dead bird in the park and all the children are standing there and they're crying and she's looking at them like why are you all crying like you know the kids are crying because the bird's dead bro okay and um she's standing there and she's like why is everybody crying this is weird so she takes the bird and she takes it to her mother who's sitting at a nearby uh, park bench with another one of the moms and she says mom look it's a dead bird and the mom's like oh oh shame we should bury it you know oh this is so sad oh my goodness and she's like why bury it let's eat it let's take it home cook it so that dad can eat it and I was just like what this is so weird so I think she's got this thing where she couldn't as a child decipher you know a rational act from an irrational one she fought with a kid at school or some kids were fighting at school and everybody was just like no stop fighting and then she got there and she's like okay so everybody's telling these people to stop fighting so that's fine then she took a chair or something and she whacked one of the kids and then she's like you guys have been saying that they must stop fighting right so i brought an end to it and then she's like nah bro <laughs> so anyway we follow her at 36 and she works in this convenience store and she just likes the mundaneness of the, the, her life, you know, waking up, going to work, greeting customers, packing shelves, getting, making sure things are ready for the lunchtime rush, the breakfast time rush and all of that. As you know, in convenience stores in, well, maybe you might not know, but in Japan, um, I don't know if this is set in Japan or Korea, but in the convenience stores, they actually also sell like food for breakfast, for uh, lunch and things like that. So it's not just, uh, yeah, well, pretty much like your, your pick and pays and I suppose. So, um, so far she's just, it's, it's giving me the impression that she just really enjoys the quiet and mundaneness of her life. And I think it says something in the social commentary that society seems to find people who enjoy the quietness, the mundaneness, introverts, because she's definitely an introvert, but the quietness, routine, mundaneness of their lives, like boring, and she doesn't. She finds a thrill from it. She enjoys her life. She enjoys the routine. She enjoys the boringness of it. And I could relate to that in some way because I enjoy being in my home. I enjoy doing nothing sometimes i don't feel the need to fill my time with being out and about and being with friends and doing this and that and the other i'm quite content and i get that in that perspective so so far i'm probably going to read it now because there's no power so i'm probably going to read it now um and see if i can finish it today because it's very very short and then uh i'm drinking coke i was on the phone with my friend let me tell you for me to drink a fizzy drink, especially Coke, you need to know that I'm, 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 I'm performing with a neighbor, okay? I'm breathing through the wound, through the nerves, you know? It's bad. But I'm going to take some time off, chill a little bit. Um, if I have something else to share, I'll come back at you guys. Uh, but yeah, for now, just enjoying the quiet time in my home, okay?
space You can keep your bitter I'ma make a better way Hey, hey, hey Better way Oh, hey, hey, hey. Hello friends, hi everybody, um, I'm actually sitting in here because, okay, that's convenient, I'm sitting down here and it's two days after the last footage which I'm not sure what it is, we're going into the weekend, it's Friday tomorrow, it's currently half past four in the afternoon. And I'm doing a little something for my book situation because we need to talk about this, okay? As much as I love to read, and I'm going to share with you guys what I'm currently reading, but at the same time, I've realized that I've got a wide selection of books, okay? I've got nonfiction, I've got modern classics, I've got fantasy down here, thrillers and horrors somewhere here, and then uh, romance, a little bit of romance, some short stories and my kind of uh, books which are literary fiction so quite a wide selection of books which i love that about me i'm not quite particular with a certain genre i try to expand it a little bit but now this is the problem when it comes to me picking a book i'm more likely to pick a book from a genre i like so i'll probably pick a thriller or i'll probably pick a horror if I'm listening to an audio, or I'll probably pick 
uh, an African literature or something. This is currently what I'm reading now, which we'll talk about now. And I realized that certain genres on my shelves go unread for a really long time. And that ain't okay. So because of that, I've decided to invest in having a TBR jar, okay? So I don't have a really nice mason jar, which I'll probably pick one up over the weekend. So for now, I'm just going to use this container, which I've got quite a few of. So I thought, ah, it's plastic. It can sit somewhere in here. And this will have all of the prompts or options that I can choose from when selecting a new book because or else I'm just going to read one section of my shelves and I'm not going to touch the others, which doesn't make sense because books are expensive. Okay. So the other day, yesterday, when I came back from work, I decided to write out the prompts on pieces of papers. So of paper. So I did that. And here they are. So these are all the prompts. There's a lot of prompts on there, okay? These are all the prompts, and all of them are different. And I'm going to fold them up into little squares like this, and then throw them in there, because I think this is the only way, and then automatically pick from the jar. Or else I'm going to pick something I want to read, and I'm going to end up finishing one section of my TBR end. Exactly. So... Uh, I thought maybe I should share some of these with you. Uh, this one that I've just folded up says a book that I've had for a long time. A book by my favorite author, which is pretty cool. A book with a place in the title. Ooh. book with a place in the title. Needless Street. See, like I can already think Sundial. It's a place in the title. A book in a series like the black girls are magic series you know what i'm saying so i think this is a great idea i'll be as i was saying before i had to get up i have quite a number of prompts here some of them say a book with a tv or movie adaptation that's nice you know a popular book love it so i'm gonna kind of cut all the uh, fold all these up an award-winning book i think i do have one do i I don't know. Some of them are like a non-fiction. Some of them are a memoir. So I think this is the best way for me to actually read some of the books that I have on my shelves. Look, no joke, no lie. I've read a lot of the books that I have. And because of that, a book with over 500 pages. Can you imagine? That already stresses me out. Uh, a book with a pretty cover. I've got a lot of those. A book that you think you'll rate five stars. Pachinko. You see, so, like, typically something that I... Uh, genres that I wouldn't look into. I've got, like, a fantasy novel here. A non-fiction book. A book with a yellow cover. That kind of thing. So it's all different types of prompts. That once I pull out whatever I need from here. Or whatever I take from here. That's what I have to read. So... That's what I'm going to do, fold these up, probably even add more as I go, uh, maybe in different colored papers and all of that, maybe add more prompts so that it makes the book reading experience for me more diverse. So, you know, I've included classics in this as well, like pick a classic, a nonfiction novel, a romance novel, a fantasy novel. So at least that's pretty good. Okay. So, earlier on in this vlog, you heard me talk about Sayaka, Sayaka Murata, convenience store woman. I am about 60 pages from finishing it, and I think I'm going to finish it now because we are out of power. But so far, absolutely loving it. In, in the story, you follow uh, Keiko and um, the life that she's living where she's just happy as a convenience store woman. I'm sure you've already seen me explain the book. But basically, I love the analogy that this book follows. So when you look at a convenience store uh, personnel or someone who works in a convenience store, you don't think much of them. In actual fact, society is actually quite mean to people who work in convenience stores, pick and pay, all of that. They often looked down upon and they expected to just kind of go with the motion, 
smile, wave, go with what society expects them to behave like while they're in the store, right? And she does this analogy with her life and uh, talking about, you know, how she doesn't meet the standards of what her society expects from women her age. They expect that a woman her age will be married. They expect that a woman her age will be working in a better job than a convenience store. They expect that a woman her age will have children all of that and she does this analogy with a certain character in the book where she's like well maybe we should do this because hey you know um maybe that's the only way we'll get society off our backs with regards to um um what is expected of us and everything so i'm actually enjoying the social commentary behind this book uh at some point i thought okay i really don't get i was really excited to read this book but it's slowing but now i see the meaning behind the title convenience store woman it's actually written pretty well it's pretty dark pretty funny um keiko keiko just herself is really dark really funny really dark um and then what i'm also currently reading and listening to on audio i think i'd need to find my place in the book because on audio i think i'm about 20 percent in but i'm not quite sure in the book where we are this is tomorrow i become a woman by i will not say or and that's the cover isn't it just stunning so i don't know how far i am page wise in the book but i'll have to kind of listen to the audio to see if i can catch up so far i'm really enjoying it so here we follow uh ooh, 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 no Uju, Uju. We follow Uju, who is this young woman who grows up in um, Ni Nigeria in the 1970s, goes to church, very respectful, kind of lives the life that is expected for young women her age to live. So at some point, she's in university, still attending church, and then she sees this beautiful specimen of a man by the name of Gozi. Gozi. Yeah, Gozi. She falls in love with him. She thinks, oh my God, he is perfect. And he's in her church. And all the girls of the church absolutely love him. And she's thinking, I'm going to marry this guy. I don't care what any of these girls do or say or want. I want this guy and I'm going to get him. And during this time, of course, there are those standard societal uh, commentaries, prejudices, her parents, her mother's constantly asking her, have you met a man? Are you seeing someone? You need to get married. You need to give me babies. What's going on? What aren't you doing? Do you need me to help you? That kind of thing. The mom is just really pressuring her um, um, to, to get married. While at the same time, at school, she's doing exceptionally well in her course, which I forgot what it was. She's doing exceptionally well, and she has this great relationship with her lecturer where his name is Akin Akin yes Akin and Akin actually sees her beyond her just being a female who can make babies and and get married Akin actually sees her as a smart person who can join on to this bursary or have an opportunity to study her masters overseas and all of that so he kind of develops this relationship with her like a, a strictly platonic relationship even though the kids in her class and in her, her her course and all of that really seem to think that there's something more going on between her and akin her lecturer but uh, they develop this really strong relationship where she can speak to him and all of that and there becomes this really murky blurry line between how she really feels with for akin and how she feels for gozier who feels like a wife a woman should be a wife and make babies and is, isn't really bothered with her studies and all of that she should just be a wife make babies and uh, uh treat me well and all of that um so eventually she gets to a really difficult place when gozier asks her to marry him and uh she gets quite unsure and and he gets um shocked because he's expecting her to just say yes the mother gets really upset when she finds out that he had she asked him to take some days to think about it her mother's just like what are you doing child oh my enemies will never win 
<laughs> so anyway, so far it's it's really really good. I really don't want to read the back of it. I just want to keep reading it and see how far I get. Definitely gonna finish this one tonight. Gonna continue with this one later on this evening or probably early tomorrow morning. The next book that I did want to read was uh, Alone With You in the Ether by Olivier Blake. Now, I did. This would be my second read by Olivier Blake. But then I then thought about this. Okay? Then I thought about this and I'm just like, you know what? Maybe no. Maybe the next book should be a reading that I pick from here. So because of that, that's what we're going to do. You guys are going to help me decide... Well, the jar is going to help me decide. And then I'm going to look at my TBR shelf. Unless it says non-fiction, then I'm going to look over there. Or classics, then I'm going to look over there. But if it's anything else, I'll look behind here. So I think I'll park this one for a little bit. I really was looking forward to reading it. The cover is just exceptional. But I'm not. I'm not going to read that. I'm going to finish these two this weekend. And in the meantime, have something going, you know? Here we go. Well, this is a nice start. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this. A book with a pretty cover. I love that. And this is a really pretty cover, but I'm 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 going to I'm going to do the right thing. So, let's see what we've got in terms of hmm a book with a pretty cover. And this is pretty much where I'm going to close off the vlog. Because it's the weekend and I really want to see if I can try maybe get out this weekend. So I'm going to close off the vlog here and start a different one from tomorrow. Tomorrow is... Can you guys even see me? Yeah. So this is pretty much where I'm going to close off the vlog. We're in that period where winter is pretty much on its way out. So it's quite warm during the day. And then once it hits 4 or 5 o'clock it gets really chilly. That's why I'm in my sweater and drinking some wine.